Have you ever wondered how one man's ambition can change the course of history? Let's take a journey back to the first century BC, to a time when Rome was a rising power, and Julius Caesar, a man of boundless ambition, stood at its helm. Caesar, a cunning politician and skilled military leader, was not content with his political standing in Rome. His eyes were set on greater glory, on a land to the north known as Gaul. Gaul, a patchwork of tribes and chieftains, was a land rich in resources and potential. Its political and social structure was complex and diverse, with tribes both allied and opposed to Rome. Yet, they lived in relative peace with the Roman Republic, unaware of the storm that was brewing in the south. As Caesar set his eyes on Gaul, a land full of potential and riches, little did the Gauls know that their world was about to be turned upside down. The drums of war began to echo in the year 58 BC. As the echoes reverberated across the verdant landscapes of Gaul, Julius Caesar, the ambitious Roman general, set his sights on the Helvetii, a formidable Gallic tribe. The stage was set for the first campaign of the Gallic Wars. Caesar's strategic genius shone through in his approach. Instead of a head-on attack he cleverly halted the migration of the Helvetii, forcing them into a position of disadvantage. Then came the key battles, each a testament to Caesar's mastery over warfare. From the clash at the Arar River to the decisive victory at Bibracte, the Romans displayed their prowess, outmaneuvering the Helvetii at every turn. The outcome of this campaign was a resounding Roman triumph. The Helvetii, once a powerful tribe, were brought to their knees. With the Helvetii defeated, Caesar's reputation as a formidable general began to take shape, but this was just the beginning. In 52 BC, Gaul's fate was to be decided at the Siege of Alesia. In the heart of Gaul, the fortified hilltop town of Alesia became the stage for one of the most extraordinary battles of the Gallic Wars. Julius Caesar, Rome's most audacious general, was seeking to quell the Gallic rebellion led by the chieftain Vercingetorix. Caesar's strategy at Alesia was as audacious as it was brilliant. He decided to encircle the town with a double ring of fortifications. The inner ring, roughly 11 miles long, was to keep the Gauls bottled up in Elysia. The outer ring, about 14 miles long, was designed to defend against the anticipated Gallic relief force. It was a siege within a siege. Vercingetorix on the other hand was relying on the strength of Elysia's fortifications and the arrival of a substantial Gallic relief force. He was a charismatic leader who had managed to unite the fiercely independent Gallic tribes against the common Roman threat. The battle raged on for several days with both sides showing incredible tenacity. Caesar's troops, despite being vastly outnumbered, held their ground. The Romans repelled wave after wave of Gallic attacks, both from within Alesia and from the relief force outside. Finally, the decisive moment arrived. Caesar, leading a surprise sortie, managed to disrupt the Gallic relief force's formation, turning the tide of the battle in favor of the Romans. The Gauls, caught between the hammer of the Roman legions and the anvil of Alesia's fortifications were defeated. The fall of Alesia was a devastating blow to the Gauls. Vercingetorix was captured, and the Gallic resistance was effectively crushed. The victory at Alesia demonstrated Caesar's military genius and cemented his reputation as one of history's greatest generals. Yet, the outcome of the battle had far-reaching consequences. It marked the beginning of the end of Gaul's independence, and the start of its transformation into a province of the Roman Empire. The fall of Alesia marked the end of organized resistance in Gaul. But the war was far from over. By 50 BC, Gaul was under the dominion of Rome, but at what cost? The Gallic Wars were a brutal and bloody affair. The casualties on both sides were colossal, with some estimates suggesting that as many as a million Gauls perished, and another million were enslaved. The Roman losses, though significantly less, were substantial as well. The aftermath of the war saw a profound shift in the political and social structures of both Gaul and Rome. Gaul, once a land of independent tribes, was now firmly under Roman control. The region was Romanized, its culture, language and customs gradually replaced by those of the conquerors. The Gallic aristocracy was decimated, and the remaining tribal leaders were replaced by Roman administrators. This was not just a military conquest but a cultural one as well. Rome too underwent a transformation. The wealth and slaves brought back from Gaul fueled an economic boom. But this newfound wealth also deepened the divide between the rich and the poor, exacerbating social tensions. Julius Caesar, the architect of this war, emerged as a hero. His popularity soared and with it his political power. 
However, his ambition and the means by which he pursued it made him many enemies. Caesar's fate is well known. His rise to power was meteoric, but so was his fall. His assassination on the Ides of March, 44 BC, was a direct consequence of the political turbulence his Gallic campaigns had helped to ignite. The legacy of the Gallic Wars is complex. They marked the expansion of Roman power across Western Europe, laying the groundwork for the Roman Empire that would dominate the ancient world. Yet they also exposed the fragility of that power, the volatility of ambition unchecked. The Gallic Wars, a testament to Caesar's military genius, were also a grim reminder of the price of ambition and the impermanence of power. The echoes of the Gallic Wars still resound in the annals of history. These brutal campaigns fought from 58 to 50 BC fundamentally altered the course of not only Gaul and Rome, but the entire Western world. Through the lens of time, we see Julius Caesar's military genius in his strategic victories, his ruthless ambition that led to the subjugation of the Gallic tribes, and his ultimate rise to power. Yet we also glimpse the resilience of the Gauls, their fierce resistance echoing down the centuries. The Gallic Wars remind us of the profound impact of individual choices and collective actions. They speak to the ripple effects of decisions made in the heat of battle, the reverberations of which continue to shape our world. As we look back on the Gallic Wars, we are reminded that history is not just about victories and defeats, but about the people, the choices, and the ripple effects that shape the world we know today.